What's cracking guys? Welcome to X-Files the game. Oh, I loved this back when I played this back in 1998. 1998, such a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> I think though I never managed to finish it. Uh, I don't know why. I really don't know why. I can remember. I think it's just. I think it's just because I was. I was a little kid back then, and I know I got to the last level. I know I got to pretty much the last level, and but I never finished it. I think it's probably because I was a, again a little kid and scared. You know, uh, scared to play the last level because I was a wimp. I'll, I'll admit that I was a wimp. Uh, but yeah, as far as the game, this I or oh, or oh, or oh, when this first came out. I, I so needed this, so needed this game, so I bought it, and then found that it was uh, seven discs, so yes, seven discs, you heard that correctly, seven discs, um, hard drives back then, back in 1998, weren't big enough to install all of the game, so whenever you moved to a new area, you had to swap out the discs, which was annoying as fuck, let me tell you that, it was annoying, thankfully these days, of course, you know, the hard drive is big enough, so I'm able to install all of all of the game onto a hard drive. Yay! So no swapping discs. Well, good, because uh, I don't have any fucking... I don't have a CD drive <laughs> to do it, so it would be pointless anyway. Um, yeah, because this is old software running on new hardware, there may be tendencies of crashing. I don't know how well it's going to play, unfortunately. I don't know if it's going to crash every two minutes, I don't know if it's going to work perfect and nothing's going to happen, uh, but we'll just have to see. Uh, I'll have to sort that all out, but I'll make sure it all works and stuff. As far as I know, it does work, but I've not thoroughly tested it. So, mm, yeah. Um, what else? What else? I know there's an X-Files game for the PlayStation. Don't, yeah, don't mix this up for, for, for the one on the PlayStation. Because I'm not sure if this one, which is a full motion video point and click, um, was on the PlayStation. I know the one on the PlayStation was X-Files Resurgence? Is that the one? Where you had like, you know, pretty much standard game graphics of what you would have on a PlayStation on a PS1, PS2. But I'm not sure if this was actually, this one was ever on the PlayStation 1 or 2. I'm not sure, I think, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, uh, after playing the bunker and, and how basically shit that was, um, I thought, do you know what, I'll treat you all to a good, a good FMV game. And this is, much like the bunker, shot entirely on, in locations. There's no 3D screening, you know, there's no like, um, green screen or anything like that. It is all shot all on, it's all, it is all, all shot, God, uh, it is sh all shot on location of places. So it's live action, much like the bunker was. But a hell of a lot better than the bunker, let me tell you that. And it's not two hours long either. Um, so premise of the game, premise of the game is that Mulder and Scully have seemingly gone missing. They've... They came to Seattle, Washington to investigate something, uh, and then as you saw, there was a bright light, and now they've gone missing. So Skinner wants to know where they've gone, so you um, are tasked to go and find them, along along with your partner, who I think we get later, if I remember correctly. I don't know. It's been 17 years, so a lot of this stuff, I'm, I, it's all sketchy and a bit blurry in my head. Um... But other than that, I don't think there is anything else that I need to say. Uh, there's not much in the options. It's just your basic audio. It should be fine. Uh, overall volume, music, dialogue, yep. Graphics, well, it's a full motion video game. There's, the graphics aren't really that important. Um, they were important back then because your bog standard PC, which cost a grand, um, might not have been able to run this. Like, seriously. Some of these options you could turn on and your computer would have slowed down. Uh, because, yeah, again, d d computers back then were not built for for, for gaming like this. Uh, you had to choose your options. Much like in um, in Broken Sword. Like, that's a point-and-click adventure game, but you still had to, to choose graphic options because some of them could have slowed down your computer because it was too taxing on your computer. Which sounds crazy today, but... 
that's that's the stuff we had to put up with back then. So, enough of my jibber jammering. Uh, if I remember anything, I will I will obviously let you know. Yeah, I still remember that. <laughs> so we've seen the intro. Um, this gets straight into it. There's no intro for this one. It just gets straight into it. So I think that's what we shall do. FBI Field Office, Seattle, April 2nd, 1996, 9.14am. Why, Agent Wilmore? Why, Agent Cook? You picked a great day to be late. There's some big gun in from D.C. I don't know what's up, but it looks serious. Ooh, right. Here we get our first three options of, uh, of a character talking to us. You will at times, will at times be spoken to by characters and will either get like the, the normal dialogue box, you know, that you can respond to them with, blah, blah, blah. And then sometimes you'll get these. So you have a response that we can pick for that. So we can either be a bit funny, you know, take the piss, whatever. Indifferent, middle of the road, not being funny, not being serious, just normal. And then paranoid. Have a second cup of coffee, then come see me. Okay, well, apparently we took too long to uh, to to make a choice, so that happened. <laughs> so yeah, you got to be thinking that. But it just it starts out much like a just like a, a normal X Files um, TV show, much like an uh, an episode. It we have the credits. Look, Mitch Pileggi. There we go. There's Skinner. So you move about by the mouse. As always, it's a point to click. So it's an FMV game, but it's still a point to click adventure at heart. Uh, so it's forward, go left. Let's go into our office. Pretty much everything is clickable and look atable. That's not even a word, but whatever. But everything's, you know, you can interact with, with quite a lot of stuff. Uh, which is great. Uh, it, it, it's a lot better than the fucking bunker, I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> there's a lot more stuff to look at and there's a lot more stuff to click on than there is in the bunker. Uh, what is this? Different type of birds and seal and what the hell? Oh, I don't know. Uh, let's go right. Uh, let's go. This is our desk, as you can see. That is our daughter and our ex-wife. The bitch. <laughs> that's, that's a bit harsh. Oh, do, 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 do. So we've got a nice hand painting by our daughter Elizabeth. Very nice. John Amos, he's King County, County Crime Lab. I don't know why we've got that when we've got it in our phone. A liar is not believed even though he tell the truth. Happy St. Patrick's Day from Beautiful Island. And then Shiloh, which is... Uh, that is, it's important. This is important. And I'll tell you why in a second. So, here we are at our desk. Oh, that's going to be our boss, Shanks. Wilmore. Agent Wilmore, I want to see you in my office. I'll be right there. But there are stuff that is is uh, is clickable, much like this. If you see the 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 electric bolt through the hand, sometimes it can be stupid, much like this. Putting a piece of tape on your on your nose doesn't really it it doesn't further on any of the story, but you know it's just a nice fun little thing. Um, I am surprised that's not here. Sometimes, I think it's you have to do a certain thing, but you will find a letter from your ex-wife on your desk from Barbara. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be here this time, which is kind of odd. Huh. So, into our drawers, we will find the main three things that we need, which is our badge, of course, our gun, and our handcuffs. So, this is our case file. Nothing really special in this. Nothing really special to look at or whatever. Just uh, random names and numbers and all that stuff. Not really needed for now, but it just gives you a sort of a bit of a, an indication of what a case file looks like. So we also do have our computer. Boom! Here we go. If you got stuck, i surprised I actually remember this. But if you got stuck on this, then there was a nice little bypass uh, to get past this part. And that is, go over to the O, 
and right click. You've got mail. Oh, I've got mail apparently. Mm, nice. So that was a nice little trick. Uh, if you are smart enough, then you may um, figure out, like I said earlier, there was one thing that was important on this board, and that was Shiloh. Shiloh is the password. It's, I know, it, there's no kind of in, in, uh, indication that Shiloh would be the password, but again, you look around, you try everything that you can. So, that's what we shall do. Just to, just to show you, um, I have to lean over and try and find my bloody keyboard now. Because <laughs> it's right behind my, uh, my, uh, my microphone. Alright, so. Mortar? No. <laughs> Great. Wilmore. And S-H-I-L-O-H. Nope, that's wrong. <laughs> eh, hold on. I'm showing Miss Wilk Milkmore. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm showing myself up now. You've got mail. There we go. See? So Craig Wilmore and Shiloh. That works. Right, so let's check our emails. To Craig Wilmore from Jim Sites. Wilmore! Hey man, how's it hanging? Great to see you last week. I It had been way too long. Glad you enjoyed the game, but I'm sorry you were too much of a wuss to play. And just for the record, it's one tooth and two concussions, not the other way around. And my pearly whites look better than ever, which is more than I can say for you. Guess it's lucky you're not a smoker, eh? <laughs> Check it later, Jim. Give blood, play rugby. Okay. Go back to the inbox. Mark Hook, pull tabs. Craig, it looks like we finally got a break on the pull tab counterfeiters. What are pull tabs? I have no idea. We should talk later, but Shanks expects us to have the case wrapped up in a few days. Just thought you'd like heads up. Oh, cheers, Mark. Do do do, case files. Craig, what does the FBI do with case files? Uh, I've been resolved. I'd love to get a hold of one or two. I've got an idea for a book, but it would involve some FBI cases, and I'd like to build it from real life. Let me know if you can think of, if if you think you can help out, but no hard feelings. If you can't, get me anything. Super M. All right, so from here, we can do um, Intelligence Network Gateway. It's... We can check for, for names, for phone numbers, for vehicle license numbers, whether they are, like I said, whether it's a citizen, FBI, government, military, law enforcement, or criminal. Uh, media, obviously we can search up on, on keywords and stuff. Photos, we do have uh, a camera. We will be getting a camera in a second. Emails, and then APBs. Uh, you do have an infantry system, which is down here, as you can see. So we have our PDA. This is going to be our, like our main hub sort of little thing. Uh, this is your map, basically. Uh, any new locations that we can go to will appear as a red pin or as a red dot or whatever. Once we've completed those locations, it should either go grey or disappear. So we are here. So we can click select, uh, select Seattle. So on here, we have three options at the moment, which is our apartment, our field office, which is where we are, and then crime labs. That's where John Amos is. Uh, but again, there will be. We will have multiple things on here that we can do. That we can go to notes. Uh, I don't think we take any notes. I think it does it automatically. Um, this is our emails. And again, I need to look up anything, any numbers or whatever. It's all here. Cool. We do have our phone. Our trusty Nokia. This. Is this a 56? I know the 5210, because I had the Nokia 5210. I love that fucking phone. That was a beast of a phone. Everybody loved the Nokia 5210. But I think this is a 56... 5510, 5610? I don't think this is a 5210. Huh. I'm going to have to look that up, actually. I'm confused. But, again, we can call numbers from here as well. It's like, we do have... Numbers that we can call. Um, any numbers that you find within the game can be called. Some will have their own little sort of Easter egg. Well, not, uh, not an Easter egg, I wouldn't say. But, you know, kind of like... A, you, you can phone it up and there'll be someone else on the line who plays a jingle or something like that. Or you get the answer from a machine, etc, etc. Uh, obviously, a badge, a gun. You can shoot anyone... 
and anywhere. So uh, I wonder if we can go to the menu. Right, I did play this before, but something fucked up. So I've had to stall this again. Do do do. So we'll overwrite this. Okay, let's go back. But yeah, you can pretty much just. I really can't believe I'm having to do this. After five years at the Bureau, you should know better. I need your badge and gun. And that what happens? And that's what happened, sorry. So we, we fired off our gun in the in the office. <laughs> Which is not something that you want to do. <sighs> um all right, let's go see. Let us go first, actually go and collect our stuff, our extra stuff, which is in here. So in here we do have our binoculars, <laughs> hiccups, a lot pick, a flashlight, the night vision goggles, evidence kit, and the camera. So again, most things can be just be used outside of outside of things so you don't necessarily need to need to be in a situation where oh you can use these at these points sort of thing so we can take a picture or whatever i don't think we can we can't arrest anyone at the moment so let's not do that uh you will see obviously hey remember the big electronic bus from fall 1995 yeah i think that was referencing actual things but i'm not too, too sure dunkin donuts we're FBI officers, not fucking police officers. Uh, rewards. Um, you will, from time to time as well, see words pop up on screen, like death and stuff like that. So, yeah. Ignore them. Just ignore them. You'll be fine. Nothing in the big cupboard. Let's go see Mark. Hey partner, how's it going? It's going grand. I shot my gun earlier and then got fired. It's great. So if we do the same, we can do the same here actually as well. Yes, yeah, overwrite. So we, you can, yeah, it's not, you, it's not just a gun. You, we can bug him. No. Let's look at him. What's, What's the doing? matter with you? There's nothing the matter with me, Mark. What's the matter with you? Yeah. Shine flashlight. Woo! What's the matter with you? Nothing. Or a night vision. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm having a play. Fuck off. Go be arrested. Don't do that. But I want to arrest you. Don't do that. I want to arrest you. I really can't believe I'm having to do this. After five years at the bureau, you should know better. Know better. Ah, uh, that's just the same one. Ah, no, no, no. Load. Yes, I am going to shoot him as well. Don't worry. Don't do that. And now we get arrested. <laughs> so yeah, there are different, like, sort of fail, fail states that you can do, like, uh, cutscenes as well, which is fantastic. Right. So who's the big gun from DC? To get into the game now, shall we? I think his name is Skinner. Assistant Director, Director Skinner. Skinner. He's the big gun down in, uh, down in DC. What case is you working on? Um, pull tab counterfeiters and uh, the militia group still active in the Northern Cascades. I'm going to assist the DEA on a meth lab ring, but I'm um, handling things okay. Well, you're going to have one more in a bit, pal. So, uh, so I do apologize. Did uh, Shank seem upset? Well, he smiled at me. That's never a good sign. Yeah, when your boss smiles at you, you know there's something up. <laughs> so there are stuff that you can look at in Mark's room as well. He's a very big music fan. 
like a very, very big music fan. Uh, well, I won't say a music fan, but more just a collector. He likes to collect old, old radios and stuff like that. Uh, Alright, so now I've given you a tour of the office. The experimenter. How to make thermite experiments. And the experimenter. Electromystic crystal globe. Arr. What am I, where am I going? It's confusing. Here we go. So yes, now I've given you a, a nice tour of the office, of our office. Let's, uh, let's go meet Assistant Director Walter Skinner. Come in. This is Assistant Director Skinner. Agent Walmart. Sir. Two of my agents are missing, Fox Muller and Dana Scully. I haven't heard from him in three days. I'm extremely concerned. So I'm just looking at what pull tabs is. A pull tab is a gambling ticket that is sold as a means to play a pull tab game. The object of the game is to open the before perforated windows on the blah blah blah. Oh, pull tab. Oh, I, I see now. Right. So that's how you do that. Okay. Sorry, I was just curious. Right, so now we're getting into dialogue. So as you can see, we can put like a nice pair of lips over AD Skinner. Oh, sexy bald man. Are they romantically involved? Well, they were. Oh, this takes place between... I want to say season 3 and season 4. So, they're... they're Boulder and Skull are a bit closer, but yeah. They have been... They, <laughs> They weren't really, I mean, they weren't really romantically involved. I think they had a thing for each other. Mulder and Scully had a thing for each other back in the early days. Uh, and then obviously they went and had a kid. But yeah, I, I wouldn't say they're not, they're not romantically involved, but they sort of do have a thing for each other. I think if they met outside of work and they weren't both FBI agents, I think they'd probably get into bed with each other. Possibly. Are they romantically involved? I don't know. I don't think so. You just you don't know your agents well well enough, Skinner. Where were they last seen? In my office in DC, right before they left. What case were they working on? I'm not quite sure. All I have is this travel requisition which shows that they were going to Everett, Washington. These two agents were able to function with a high degree of autonomy due to the nature of the cases they pursued. What? Well, being spooky as fuck? Accounting and travel section re requisition. Agents will fly first available coach class to destination from Dulles Airport, Washington, D.C. Arrive at Seattle, Tacoma. 96. 3rd of 28, 96. Reservation for seven nights. Rooms 103 and 104, arrival time open, classified, Skinner Director. Okay. Can I get their cell phone numbers? Uh, you'll find it in the dossier, however, they're not answering. Oh, I could do with a pen and paper, actually. Have they disappeared before? No, not like this. Have they been romantically involved in the past? As I say, I don't know. I don't believe so. <laughs> so... Craig's thinking that they've uh, they've sort of eloped and fucked off together, which they haven't done. Should Cook be involved in this investigation? Well, it's up to you, really. You know the Bureau's policy on backup? I would suggest you use all available resources. And I will do. Do you know of anything unusual in Everett? There's nothing that I'm aware of. What should I do with my current cases? Hand them off to Cook. I know he's busy, but this is priority. File an APB on Mulder and Scully, then give your current case files to Cook. A.D. Skinner will join you shortly. When you've got two missing agents, so uh, it's kind of the uh, priority. All right, so here we are, Mulder and Scully. Back in 90, 90, like early 90s, well, mid 90s, sorry, 95, 96, 97. Um, she was uh, the hot redhead. I mean, let's be honest, Scully is kind of hot, and the uh, the actor, the actress who plays her, and her name, 
really has gone from my mind, is actually British. She was uh, born in Cambridge, I think. Oxfordshire, I think she was. I think she's from around that place. But she is actually British. She's not American. Ha <laughs> ha! I think her mother's British and her father's American, all the other way around. But I know she was born in England, so she's she's technically British. <laughs> but she was she was a very hot redhead back then. Uh, my two like the two redheads that I sort of like have a really big crush on is Scully and um, the actress uh, and Willow from from Buffy. Those two were like the hot redheads back then. Oh. Could have been different for you, but whatever. So this is a photo probably from where they were last seen. And then we've got a uh, file on Scully. Last name Scully, first name Dana Catherine. Birth date February 23rd, 1964. Race Caucasian, eye colour blue green, hair colour red, height 5'3, weight 100 pounds, sex female, graduate of University of Maryland, major physics, medical degree, graduate of FBI Acad Acad Academy. Quantico, Virginia. Parents, Father William, deceased. Mother, Margaret. Siblings, Brother William J. and R. Charles. Sister, Melissa, deceased. Sully, a phone, blah, blah, blah. And Mr. Mulder. Last name, Mulder. First name, Fox. William. Birthday, October 20th, 30th, uh, October 13th, 1961. Race, Caucasian. Eye color, hazel. Hair color, medium brown. Height, 6. Foot, weight, 168 pounds. Sex, male. Graduate of Oxford University. Major ph physiology... Psychology, graduate of FBI Academy, Quantico, Virginia. Parents, father William, deceased. Mother, Tina, living in Massachusetts. Siblings, sister, Samantha, whereabouts, currently unknown. Yeah, because uh, apparently she was abducted. Right, so I've spoken to you two. So now it's time to go put out an APB. Oh, we've got this first. So, okay. What's happening? You can't just sit on this. you got to tell me what's happening. So we can either be mean, casual, or serious. We'll be casual. You know, the usual. Missing FBI agents. Who? Pair out of D.C., Mulder and Scully. Male and female. And he doesn't really care. All right, let's go put out this APB for these two, then. Boop, boop. Can't be asked to enter it, so we'll just do that. <laughs> All points bulletin. Missing Mulder. Yeah, it just gives details of, uh, of who we're looking for. And send. Boom. Right, that's out. So now we'll go give our case files to Cook. He's not going to be a happy bunny, but, well, there's not really much we can do about it. Mr. Cook, here are your case files. I don't want that. Well, you're going to have to. Oh, bollocks. Talk to him and then, yeah. Shanks wants me to hand my cases off to you. I know, Mark. I know. We're here. Great. Thanks, golden boy. You are very much welcome, my friend. Oh, yeah. Um, whenever we get some items of, of interest that we need to talk to people about, they will appear up here as well. That's uh, one thing that I forgot to mention. I suggest we start with the motel where Mulder and Scully are staying. I'll be waiting for you in the car. It's all right, Craig. Don't worry about it. He's just—he's very concerned about his two agents. Like Mulder and Mulder and Scully are his his best agents. He loves them too. I love Mulder and Scully as well. As we all love Mulder and Scully. Who doesn't love Mulder and Scully? Who doesn't love the X Files? The X Files was fantastic. Um, I saw a little bit of—I think I saw a couple of episodes of the new series that they put out. I haven't seen the rest of them yet. I need to watch them. Ah, uh, but anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Um. So yeah, so now we're heading out to the motel. This would be a point where, once you get into the motel, this would be a point where you would switch discs uh, to the second disc. I'm hoping that it actually works and it doesn't crash on me and it automatically goes there. But we'll have to see and that will again be for next time. But anyway guys, thank you all so very much for watching this episode and I will see you all next time and as ever. Bye bye.